Gaurang. Good evening, ma'am. Uh, you will be there, no? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Good evening, Jotsna, ma'am. Hello, good evening, ma'am. Good evening, good evening. Hi, Jotsna. Yeah. How many people have joined? Three, four, five. Six, six have joined, ma'am. Yeah. So. Maybe just two more minutes and we should start then. Six yeah, or five yeah. will start. Yeah. Johnson, ma'am, you are muted. Good evening, everybody. This is Kenya Suhasini, ma'am. Ah, I am not in Kenya. I am now in Australia. That's why my video is off. It is 11.30 p.m. Oh, okay, okay. I come to meet my grandson, four months. Ah, have a lovely time. Yeah. Nice, ma'am. Yeah. Kenya was very good. Went to only uh, Masai Mara or you went to other places? No, too? no, we have gone to Masai Mara. We went to Nakuru and Naivasha. Ah, okay. Different type of a trip. We went to the Hell's Gate, that national park, because there were a lot of rock formations there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That volcanic eruptions and all. Yes. That, no? Yes. yes. Hmm. Nice. Yeah. Please share some pictures, ma'am. Would love to see it. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Sure. I will do that. Yeah. Okay. Then we'll say good night to you, ma'am. Yes. 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 Uh, can you all call up each other? Mirna? Mirna, can you call up Mirna? Yes, yes, ma'am. Doing, doing, ma'am. Yeah. Rohit is there, Rohit? Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Rohit is there. Rohit yes, is there. Who is not there? Jyoti, ma'am. Oh, ma we'll check, ma'am. Yes, yes. Anand, sir, is not there. Rohit, call up Anand. Okay, ma'am. Yeah. Nagra ma'am, when are you reaching India again? Sunday. Okay. Yeah. Meanwhile, if anyone has any question, we can discuss. Ma'am, I have a question. 
Yes. Uh, ma'am, uh, do we have to take a uh, clearance for this also, ma'am? Whatever the design we are going to. Okay. You're not doing any research per se, right? Yes, ma'am. You're developing a curriculum. You're developing a model. Curriculum. So need for ethical yes, practice for this. This is just a hands on, ma'am. This is just a hands on, right? How to develop, how to. That's all. How to build one? Huh? It's yeah. just a hands-on, just to uh, yes. acquaint yes. ourselves on how to design a curriculum. That's all. Yes, yes, that's all. And do we have to always follow Spice's model or we can, as per our requirements, can we uh, reshuffle? You can always follow whatever model you want. The reason okay. why we suggest a model is to have a scaffolding. Okay. And you will follow all the processes systematically. Okay. And different models cater to different needs. Correct, correct. So, no, in your in your checklist, ma'am, you mentioned spices model only. Say, for example, if I am comfortable using Addy model, I can go ahead with Addy model. This model. The spices model is not a curriculum design model. I okay. I told this I think two times previously also. I'm not okay. sure you are present, Minakshi. The spices the spices model is more of a guidance in terms of how your final product should look like that is it should be student centered okay. it should be more of experiential learning it should be more right. of hospital based or community based learning okay. right electives not that that is what it indicates okay and no, 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 the question why it uh, arose in my mind is because we don't in whatever i have prepared right now i don't use any electives so can i add Adding models because adding model was more uh, convenient. Again, it's it's the same doubt you have. Okay. Your spices model is an indicator to you to make your module student centered. Okay. Okay. Understood. To make it more problem based. Problem based. Okay. To make it more community oriented. Okay. To see to it that your whole curriculum becomes kind of electives where different people can progress in different ways according to their needs. Okay? okay, so that is what the spices model is all about. Okay. If you choose to use Addy model or you use Dirk and Carry model or you're going to use Kern's okay. model or you use the okay. 4CID model, whatever it is, is up to you. Okay. What is required is to critically think as to why you are choosing a particular model. model. Now, the Addy okay. model is a very generic model. Very, okay. very generic. ID is very generic, okay. Yeah, it is. And it can be used for anything. It can be used for a management pro a project also, right? Mm -hmm. It can be used for problem solving in any field. Correct. Whereas there are some models which are health specific. Health okay. uh, professions, education specific. Okay. 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 Whenever you choose a model, please be mm -hmm. aware as to why you are choosing it. Okay. Understood. That's all. There is no sacros and true that this is the only thing to be to follow. Oh, okay. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, the other three. Shall we start with today's session? I'm ready. I'm ready. Uh, three are missing, so we I can think get. It is hard. Yeah. Gaurang, the plan is that we are going to have breakout rooms. That was my initial plan. Uh, what do you oh. all feel? better so that everybody gets an opportunity to present their models yes ma'am uh, i think whoever is present let us begin with it because it will take some time yeah so uh can we have two breakout rooms okay and uh, i think there are seven of you today so four and three and we'll uh, it is now six ten so probably by the time we disassemble it will be six fifteen please come back by 7.15. Okay. If, so, should uh, I make two? Just, just a second. Just a second. So, each person present your model or module in about seven minutes. Take feedback for another six to seven minutes. Please go through the checklist very methodically. Mm -hmm. The reason is that you will become 
automated with, when you start using those checklists or is this there this there this there so subsequently when you develop also you will start thinking along those lines so that is the reason will be presenting, uh, presenting we will be presenting yes. to our, within the group only or will be presenting to you no no present it within the group i will be there in both the groups so you will be observing in both the groups yes and I would, uh, if Gaurang is available, I would request him to moderate one group and I will be there. But don't expect us to keep the time or anything. Ma'am, uh, can I suggest one thing? Since yes. seven of us are present, can you go ahead with the presentation directly without breaking into... I don't have a problem, but not all of you will get so much of time. Is that okay? I think that will be, that will be okay. That will, I think that will save the time now. Okay, so then we will do one thing. Each one of you will get only five minutes. Yes. Okay, five minutes. And then there is going to be peer questioning. I'm going to be the silent spectator today. So the peers will raise the question based on the checklist. Mm -hmm. And when you're going to get the questions, do not think this as some kind of a way where you need to escape or run away or be defensive. Take it with the spirit that you want to learn. Right? So, um, five minutes of Q&A. Yes. Uh, yes, sir. Ma'am, actually, uh, this is not my uh, project topic, but for this assignment, I have prepared the topic. No problem. Mm. It's all for a learning Can experience. I... Then just okay. wait. Somebody... Just wait. Just wait a minute. Yeah. Arun, sir, go ahead. Tell me. Uh, Ma'am, uh, till now, we have seen the model. We have seen the checklist map. We have never seen a model is being prepared and showed to us like how the model is made. So these are all our, in a sense, what I say is I have made a model, a format. We have seen what is the Kern's model look like and what are the checkpoints to be added to this. So exactly a framework of the model is not seen by us. So what we have prepared is like a baby steps. Like we have just added up those things read the articles, then incorporated all those things into our presentation. So these are all our baby steps to understand the curriculum per se. Yeah, we are not asking you to design a curriculum because that's a huge task. Mm -hmm. okay. Instead of that, a microscopic view of that would be a module. Okay. And in when you are writing your module also, you have to go through the same strategic steps as outlined in the checklist. You need to have your vision, mission outlined. You need to have your objectives in place. You need to have your end goal properly identified. So it's all the same thing. All right. Okay. okay. And when you're designing itself, you need to think of how you will evaluate it, how you will take feedback and all that. So okay. if you have addressed those things, that's absolutely fine. Okay. Right? We're all learning from each other. So it's okay. Ma'am, does everybody want, do not want breakout rooms? Is that... Uh... Uniformly decided, or it is only this ma'am is initiating and she wants to present it. <laughs> no, 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 whatever everybody is fine, we can go yes, ahead. No, actually, ma'am, even I feel like uh, it will take a long period of time to present everyone's presentation Sorry. and the lesson. So, even I feel that breakout session will be better to discuss. Discuss. I'm okay either ways. You guys take a call. Yes, because, because last because presentation and all it took two, uh, two sessions to present everyone. Uh, the project and all. It took two right. time. Uh, two right. sessions. So, so ma'am, what we are supposed to do in the breakout room? Even in the breakout room also, we are going to present among our colleagues. So you mean yes. to say that two sessions will be going on simultaneously? Simultaneously. Yeah. Then how ma'am is going to observe both the sessions? I'll not be observing both the sessions, so I'll be peeping in. This is more of peer learning. Even in this session also, I am not be speaking. It is more of peer learning. I'll just... Uh, Jyotsna, as, Mirna, as, as Mirna put it, let them present it. And in two to three minutes, everybody gives a feedback. There are seven people. Even if you take 10 minutes, it will be 70 minutes only. No ma problem. If it will be under your direct observation now, at least we'll get some feedback. Because yeah, uh, sure. we are not masters among ourselves. Okay, no problem. Okay, uh, please ensure that you present in five minutes. Okay. 
point one. Point two, to present in five minutes does not mean that you will present like an express train so that nobody understands anything. Present the key points in those five minutes. <coughs> Fine. And at five minutes, please stop. Okay. And then let's have at least five minutes for a Q and A between the peers. We need that much of time. Otherwise, it is going to be just like for the sake of it, we'll be doing something. Okay. So, do we want to go roll number wise? Or how do you want to go? But yes, sir, uh, do you mind going last today? Because last time we had a discussion with your work. Uh, actually, I'm not ready today. No problem. I'm extremely sorry. Okay. So, that so my is... 10 minutes would be, you know, uh, okay. not today to... We can have a few. <laughs> okay, whoever wants to start, please start now. Ma'am, uh, I'll go first. <laughs> because I'm the novice one. Okay. So, with everybody's permission, I will start. Is it visible to everyone? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, so uh, tentatively, uh, good evening, everyone. Tentatively, I have prepared this uh, project for this assignment only. Uh, my topic is digital dentistry for BDS students or interns. Now, according to the uh, uh, checklist prepared by ma'am, I have prepared these slides. Going to the rationale, uh, what is the need for this module or curriculum? This will help in the enhancement of the learning experiences like digital tools such as the virtual reality simulation. Uh, uh, yeah, do you mind going into slideshow mode so that we can see your slides? Okay. Is it okay, ma'am? Please put it in slideshow mode. Oh, slideshow. Okay. Now it's okay? No, it is in PPT mode. I think you shared a different mm -hmm. uh, thing. No, no, ma'am. Yeah. Slideshow only. And go to the slide show on top uh, of your uh, title bar. Okay. Uh, no, in the Where PPT the... only, I have. No, no, ma'am. Okay. From next to home, insert designs, transitions, animations, then you have slide show now. Top mode. Slide show. Top mode. No, no, no. Uh, just a minute. Please stop sharing and share the screen where you have the slide show on. Okay. Now, ma'am, if I am stop sharing it. For every presenter, let's identify two people who will give feedback. Now, this can also ask, you can post it in the check, uh, this the chat box. Two speakers, uh, two. Ma'am, is it full screen now? No, ma'am. Oh, my God. Ma'am. Uh... Ma'am, next to file, there is home. Insert, design, transitions, animations, and slideshow is there, ma'am. Click on that. Okay. Go to slideshow and click on it. In the PPT itself, I am going to the slideshow, no? Ah, okay. In the PPT only, you can go, ma'am. Either on the top or to the bottom. Ma'am, the bottom only, I am going to. Ah, you can go to the bottom one. Next, 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 right ah. side. Yeah, that one. Ah, yes. Now it is visible. It'll you click on that. Ah, yeah, I clicked it on clicked on it. No? Is it visible? I am simply wasting the time. I don't know. Where, uh... Okay, uh, can we go to the next speaker? Ma'am, please sort it yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, ma'am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorting it out. Yeah. 
who would like to present next? Would like to present next. Ma'am, if nobody is willing, I am willing to present. But Arun where sir, to Arun sir, you want to present? Arun sir, you go ahead. Binakshi, you present. I will carry on next. Binakshi, are you presenting? Yes, 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 yes. One, one second, ma'am. Huh? One second. Uh, can I request someone to send me in the WhatsApp uh, where to put that uh, full slide more? If in the group somebody can say, I'm unable to get it. Just press F5. F5? Yes, yes. Okay, okay. You're able to see my slides, ma'am? Please put it on slideshow, no? Yes, 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 ma'am. Sure. Visible, ma'am? Yes. Yeah. So, my module will be on uh, infection control, prevention and control in dental hospitals, targeting our uh, undergraduate students, our interns, and uh, hospital staff and auxiliary staff. <coughs> So dental clinics and hospitals carry out numerous invasive procedures to the point that each treatment space can be considered a small operating room where a significant number of microorganisms are produced. Furthermore, due to exposure to a broad spectrum of pathogenic microorganisms and the use of sharp, potentially hazardous instruments and equipment, especially in our dental Minakshi. scenario. Minakshi, uh, don't read from the slides presented because you have only five minutes. Okay, ma'am. So there is increased risk of uh, cross contamination among the auxiliary personnel or the clinician to the patient. So, a study of awareness and practice of infection control was done in 2021, targeting the students where their knowledge assessment was done. And we got to know that there is a dire need to minimize the dental infection at hospitals and develop infection control curriculum programs. So, as we all know, our dental environment or the um, atmosphere per se has both environmental surfaces. And clinical contact surfaces, as well as housekeeping surfaces, which targets large amount of microorganisms. And hence, this module requires the development of infection control protocol or a curriculum, which mainly targets the third year and final year BDS students, our interns, and not to forget the nurse, nursing staff and auxiliary staff. With, uh, with this uh, uh, introduction and keeping the need in mind, the learning object will, uh, objectives will be to identify the potential sources of injury or disease in a dental setup to analyze the effects and consequences of these hazards, list out the risk, risk factors associated with dental health care, associated infection, decide the control measures that needs to be taken to reduce risk. So our expected outcome would be at the completion of the program, the students are expected to understand the principles of workplace health and safety as it pertains to dentistry, to be, a, uh, to be able to identify workplace hazards, design implemental strategies for the same, understand the co co concepts of cross-infection control, to be able to design and implement a cross infection protocol for a particular dental establishment and should be able to converse with and educate the members of the public or any other of the above areas and should be able to conduct an in service staff training program. So, keeping this in mind, the model which, uh, as we have discussed, so it, it, it uh, sums up to SPICE's model where there is integrated teaching, community based electives, and systematic learning. It is a student centered learning with problem based involvement and elective modes. Uh, when come to curriculum organization and the development of the module, so my content design and organization includes uh, four modules, with various topics and subtopics pertaining to the basic concepts, standardized precautions, infection control policy, and occupational transmission, um, which will be dealt uh, for a maximum period of uh, four hours for uh, four days. So the instructional approach includes the case-based learning, problem-based learning, and didactic learning, that is the activities through video presentations, posters, and pamphlets. The curriculum monitoring and improvement system includes the assessment, which includes the MCQs, Google Form Administration, reflections, case-based assessment, and simulation-based assessment, if at all if there is a chance to simulate the environment and make it more interesting for the students. It also includes technology integration in the form of online sessions, audio visual aids, Google Forms to assess the pre-test and post-test, and WhatsApp group also will be created to disseminate the guidelines and any interactions. So the curriculum management system and team in includes um, 
most responsible, accountable, consulted and informed team members or my stakeholders where the roles and responsibilities will be dealt based on the profession, speciality and personal qualities. And hence ownership of the work is very crucial here. And hence provide training and support for trainers and facilitators will be part of the module. When, when it comes to accessibility, inclusivity, very important is the cognitive accessibility, physical accessibility, the feedback mechanisms and inclusive communication among the team members to disseminate their knowledge to, through the to the students. So the other tools include WhatsApp group, Zoom calls, if at all, as and required, Google classrooms, panel discussion, and interactive session to make it more uh, participatory. So these are the other uh, learning, teaching learning methods which we uh, take. So learner support includes the feedback. Learning sources include handouts and uh, some videos also will be shared. Learning environment will be online and sometimes it will be clinical based. So four modules for four days will be my uh, schedule. And the student learning approach will be more self-directed. So the assessment system includes both formative and summative where students are examinable at any stage during the clinical training in the cross infection control area. And for summative, a 10 minute oral presentation is also done where they will be assessed on all these uh, um, topics that is scab selection and training, management of shafts, surface decontamination, and management of hazard. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Uh, do the peers have any questions for Minakshi? Please stop sharing. Uh, keep it on, keep it on. A particular slide oh. we want. Oh, oh. slideshow shall I? Uh... Shall I, shall I come out of the slide show, Is that okay? That's okay. Dr. Minakshi, what uh, model uh, are you following for designing oh. this technique? Preview ke baju mein jo first slide se dekhega, us us par jaake being. Uh, ma'am, can we mute your audio? Nirna, ma'am. Yes, sir. Sorry, ma'am. Okay. Yeah. The spices model only, sir. We just had a discussion with the ma'am as well just now. So I was more interested with the ID model that was more uh, appealing. And, but then as uh, ma'am suggested that uh, when it comes to health professions, education setup and all the spices model would be more convenient and it would be student centric and problem based. So I thought I'll go for spices model only. Minakshi, let me clarify once again. Spices okay. is not a curriculum design model. Okay, ma'am is not a curriculum design model okay it is just to let you know that you need of to course. consider student centered and all those aspects so please okay. don't say that you designed your module based on spices no it is okay. not done okay if you are still having a doubt please give me a call i'll explain to you once again sure ma'am sure, sure sure yeah okay yeah just uh, it took, took a little more time to make that thinking Yes, as you are, I understood right. I understood rightly. Any other questions? Ma'am, your assessment method yeah. you can elaborate. Uh, it includes a formative and a summative assessment. Um, let me go back to that. Okay. So students, uh, in, in case of formative, after the module has been administered to, to the students, clinically they'll be evaluated whether they're following the protocol and their clinical training itself. Later for summative, after the module would have been completed, we are asking them to present an oral presentation on following topics, whether they are following the required protocol like guidelines and uh, whatever the amendments are there as per CDC. So all those uh, criteria will be assessed and that would be my distribution of marks also. 75% for the uh, accurate as per semester, if at all, if at all, if they are taking a little longer time rather than uh, four modules, if not for uh, four weeks, if it is going a little lengthy, then I thought I'll con consider it as a first semester, maybe uh, for four months or so, for a month or so, for four weeks. So it will be 75, 50% uh, and 25%. If uh, fellow students, that is peer evaluation, will be carrying 50% of marks, and one of our uh, uh, stakeholders will also be part of the presentation, which carries around 25%. So total will come up to 75%. They have to score at least 75% for patients. That would be my assessment. You decided on yeah. pilot implementation of your curriculum. Sorry? Pilot implementation of your curriculum, like uh, whether your implementation is a straight yes. one or it is a pilot implementation followed by 
uh, yes need assessment will be done sir this is that yes need assessment will be done where a pre test survey will be done depending on their available the acquired knowledge after getting to know that there is a dire need for uh, further uh, implementation into the curriculum then only the curriculum will be formed ma'am who will be conducting the uh, this curriculum will be assigned Actually, no we will have a um, we will have stakeholders in our the module uh, development um, where um, a surgeon also will be included uh, a technical staff also will be included nursing staff also will be included where they will be able to pro where each one of them will be sharing their knowledge and views and how, and how to um, maintain the asepsis protocol in our dental center probably the stakeholder slide i think i missed i have not included the stakeholders that's why this doubt is there okay in in uh, in keeping time and under consideration i mean actually okay. i have uh, six questions let's okay. see if we can quickly look at it okay yes. so first let's go to your target group okay quite a lot of target yes yeah now your target is varied you have three students final year yes. students interns yes. nursing staff auxiliary staff yes large group large group yes ma'am and this group has got different needs right your third year final year they might have academic needs also they need to perform in the clinics interns do not have academic needs but they need to perform in your clinic okay. your nursing staff auxiliary staff their background their ability to de deliver is totally different so how will only one module cater to such a wide population group yes yes ma'am this question i actually had when i was putting the target audience as well but then if i restrict then it would not make sense I, that's what i felt so i included all the target audience See, because without nursing See, and oxygen it followed the kerns model you would have identified properly that you need to first go with a needs assessment correct correct and based on the need of your target population you would have designed what are your learning objectives correct now when i look at your learning objectives please go to the next slide these learning objectives are designed by you yes. but there is no input from your target audience is it what the is it this is what the students want to learn this is what the nursing staff want to know is this what no. the auxiliary staff want to learn so you are going yes. traditional approach of curriculum design you are not going with the model based okay. approach that's the reason there is a difference okay, okay second thing when i look at the verbs there identify list okay. decide, huh. these are not higher order thinking skills okay we discuss this in depth you have to go with the bloom's taxonomy higher bloom's order taxonomy. thinking skills higher okay. order effective domain higher order psychomotor domain whatever it is so do you want your students or nursing staff to just list and yeah. analyze or do you don't want them to perform perform yes sir. right so yes sir focus on designing your learning objectives in that manner let's okay. go to the the expected outcome so when you look at expected outcome it now just says students right yes, and when sir. i look at the students the last one also says they should be able to conduct an in service conduct. training program correct so i was thinking on the with respect to see when you have too many target audience wide so range this kind of a confusion will happen okay okay so our whole objective is to design a module appropriately for that particular target group okay okay so we'll have to redesign go to the slide okay. where section curriculum monitoring and improvement system curriculum monitoring management team ma uh, one slide before that you had this curriculum monitoring and improvement system you mentioned it i don't know where you mentioned it previously only it was there before your uh, curriculum management system this component was there yeah there this one you have the term, okay. 
the previous slide. You have the term curriculum monitoring and improvement system. Please go to the previous slide. No, the one on assessment. Yes, this one. Yeah. So here, oh. what do you understand by curriculum monitoring and improvement system? Uh, Ma'am, what I interpreted was the assessment. Assessment and what are the other tools which I will be incorporating to monitor my smooth sailing of my curriculum design. So, how is an MCQ or Google form or reflection a curriculum monitoring system? External monitoring. When we discuss curriculum monitoring, and improvement system, it means you need to take feedback from your learners. You need to take feedback from your teachers. Okay. Okay. As to how is this going? What was the plan? What's the execution? Okay. Where are the gaps? How do we need to improve? Challenges. So basically. Challenges, ma'am. Monitoring and improvement system. Okay. Okay. And when you say a Google form, a Google form is is just a tool it, no, it's not tool. necessarily an assessment method okay isn't it in a google form you can ask them their age gender and other things a google form okay. can also be designed as an open-ended tool it can also be designed okay. as an mcq so please be very specific as to whether you're talking of an assessment method or okay. you're mentioning an assessment tool tool okay your reflection case based assessment anything and everything can be done in a google form okay so that's the point now, please go to the slide on curriculum management system i think you've not understood this when we talk of curriculum management system idea was your learning management system lms right now we are all LMS. using LMS. okay okay so that is what I wanted to look at. Are you going to have a Google Classroom designed? Okay. Attendance. Is... Google Classroom. This is what I was thinking. Okay. This is no, 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 no. Go to that slide 13. Okay. 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 You need not have it online. Like traditionally, how okay. we don't have an online system in many colleges. It can be like that okay. also. But you should have thought about it. Okay. okay. So this slide on responsible, accountable, informed, consulted is not valid here. Okay. 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 Then please go to. Uh, I have one more question. So you have got mm -hmm. four models modules, right? Yes. Yes. So. How do you know that a student uh, is fit for progressing from module one to two? What is your cutoff point? Oh, Are you going to say they pass module one only, they'll be eligible for module two? Okay. What is your progression decision? Ma'am, I didn't hear you. What is your? What is your progression decision? Okay, okay. Okay, so these are all some of the aspects you should consider when you design. Okay. So you can read it later on. Sure, okay. sure. Yeah, I, I think we took about 17 minutes right now because this was the first one. Let's stick to time next one. Like, okay. Next, who wants to present? I'm I'll be I'm let me try. Okay, okay, okay. Ma'am, can you see the uh, slide? Yes, sir, and sir, go ahead. Ma'am, uh, the implementation of new curriculum for digital integration for final year BDS students. My target group here is the final year BDS students. So, rationally, is the manual integration subject traditionally practiced by all of us, which creates an imprints of necessary areas and uh, provides us to make the processes. 
Whereas uh, digital impression is an advanced method. It's a precise uh, impression or precise method than the previous one, which can give you high quality images, which can be converted into uh, a design model and subsequently uh, processes can be fabricated. So I'll be following Kern's model uh, in uh, designing uh, my curriculum, which contains typically six steps, which will be explained and incorporated step by step. In the uh, step of the Kern's model is the problem identification and general need assessment. So general need assessment will be uh, done among the fresh uh, graduates or the uh, and undergraduate teachers of dental school, college, and technicians. And uh, what is presently followed techniques and uh, drawback of the same will be advantages of incorporating digital question can be assessed by using questionnaires by the study among undergraduate students, dental office, and dental academics. Focus group discussion among the faculty. What we are doing is preparation of conceptual framework for existing and proposed new curriculum. So my vision statement is to see a roadmap in generating a digitalization of indirect restorative work in dentistry. And uh, to execute this, my mission, mission statement is to incorporate digital records in diagnosis, treatment planning, and in patient education. The step two of my uh, curriculum designing is need assessment of targeted uh, learners. My targeted learners are the final year BJ students to find out what information the target group possesses at present and uh, determining the characteristics of learning environment. This could also involve a, a basic curriculum of each aspect, including the content of my uh, preparation, uh, standard of these uh, things, including a blueprint of my content, and uh, the question paper or subsequent things would be considered, put it forward uh, along with the uh, this to the administrative group. A uh, SWAT analysis of the target learners will also be helpful to know what are their standpoint about the new curriculum. So my third step is goals and objectives. It's based on the answers or responses received in the previous uh, step. So we prepared on the knowledge, attitude, skills of the target learners and the faculty would be incorporated in, in, in forming the curriculum. So in defining goals, students able to record accurate impression in comparison to the conventional technique. I'll be identifying and defining the competency, how to use digital scanner and obtain desired results. In my specific objective, which, which are generally measurable, whether recorded impressions are workable to design and fabricate processes. My fourth step would be the educational strategies. Education strategy will be scheduled over five years in, a, in the dental college. In the phase one is a theoretical classes and the phase two is a clinical demonstration, where the cognitive objectives like lectures, psychometric objectives, competency uh, objectives, and affected objectives or the reflection based on the reflection, the road models will be set in. Finally, the implementation, integration into the existing curriculum, both into basic course as well as a clinical course. This can be done by providing lectures, demonstrations, and hands on to the targeted group. Finally, evaluation and the feedback. The evaluation of the basic course, which is being done, including the, uh, the clinical course, the clinical curriculum implemented. How effective is the digital impression compared to the conventional impression will be compared. The assessment is basically based on the short essays in the form of exams, clinical case presentations, and also the targeted group are supposed to give a, um, uh, the, do the scanning procedure or recording the impressions on models and the patients. Then I complete. Uh, I Sir, what about your vision, mission, management system, and all those aspects? It, it was very nice to see that you have adopted a Kern's model. Yes, ma'am. But where is the outcome? I, I wanted to see the module. I can see your plan for uh, this thing, but I can't see the concrete steps in it. Uh, so, are you, how are you going to make it student centered? How are you going to ensure that uh, it is problem based? So, those details should be there, right? It's a framework which I have uh, made. Uh, how to start with this and who is my uh, target group? And uh, it's, it's a student centric. And what all curriculum that I want to include in this? 
and who are all to be part of my uh, board of uh, public education curriculum. That's so, see you have followed the strategic steps in Kerns, so it gives you an idea like this is the way I want to go about. Yes. Now, what we are expecting here is one step ahead, where I can see a module in place. Okay, it does not mean that you should have done the needs assessment. It's just you will have an idea, right? Okay. So based on needs assessment, I might get this kind of a data. Based on that, what will be my objectives? How will I plan to deliver this curriculum? How will I make it problem based? How will I make it community learning? So those kind of things you should be able to put it. So right now, if I had to look at the translation into action, it is at a good 20 to 30 percent beginning stage. Okay. So we have another 70 percent to travel before it can become a reality. At this stage of your presentation, I would expect it to be at least 60 to 70 percent ready. You may not have the exact timetable to say I'm going to start implementing it from March. But I should have a something concrete at least. No. Okay. So that's now. You also mentioned about curriculum integration. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. And in curriculum integration, you made an interesting point where you said you're going to integrate it uh, through lectures and demonstrations. Yes, ma'am. But curriculum integration does not mean your teaching method. What it means is in the existing curriculum let's say the final year bds students learning a particular method of making an impression okay. and you have some particular time allocated for it okay. but you are saying that the digital impression making techniques are more relevant and it is a need for this set of students so in the available time how will you ensure your students are going to learn both the techniques, one which is there in the existing curriculum and one which you have identified? So that's how we go about integrating. So integrating is basically comparing between the conventional versus the digital or uh, are we integrating? Integrating is how you bring it all together and one platform. For example, so if you're learning about diabetes, then the physiology of diabetes, the pathology of diabetes, the medicine for diabetes, the general medicine treatment for diabetes, everything is going to come under the same disease. Okay. So if an anatomist comes and talks to the student about pancreas, then the physiologist will come and talk about insulin and how it is, uh, how the imbalance is going to cause a problem. The pathologist will talk to the student about what are the ill effects because of that, the pharmacy will talk about what are the different medicines available. General medicine people will talk about the clinical manifestation. And once you give the medicine, what is going to happen to the patient? Okay. Maybe a surgeon will come and then talk about complications and how do you treat the surgical history of it? Okay. So it's same component, but different, different realms of the same thing are being taught to the student. Okay. That is integration. Here we are not comparing and contrasting with anything else. Okay, ma'am. While while I'm speaking, I said integrating the existing curriculum, uh, both in basic uh, course as well as in the uh, clinical course, like what is happening and what we are going to be doing, both in the basic course and the clinical course, which can be done by means of lectures and also by a demonstration. That's hands on. It's fine. So that, but integration plan should focus on how and where you will integrate. I want to talk to them about this in second year. Okay. I want to talk to them in the third year when they're uh, making uh, RPDs. Okay. So what stage you are going to integrate, that's where the focus should be. All right. And commonly what we do is, we always go with a long essay or some other method of assessment. Lecture method of assessment. I mean, teaching. This is a hands on procedure. Correct? Yes, ma'am. When it's a hands on procedure, how will the lecture method help you? Uh, 
both I have mentioned both lecture as well as the clinical course. Right, but why do you want a lecture? I just to know about the basics of uh, the uh, the optics which involved in digital impressions and also uh, the concept of the uh, digital impressions. How about trying out a YouTube method? YouTube videos which are used for teaching. How about opening up the platform for a flipped classroom? How about talking about demonstrations and simulations? Simulations you have mentioned it. Right. Uh, yes, so, yeah. So we'll have to think beyond okay. what doing traditionally to what is actually needed for the student. So okay. you might get a needs assessment where you are taking students in class. But you have to go one step beyond and say, okay, what is it that the students want to learn? How many attempts do they want to learn this? How will I give them that many opportunities to learn? Then it becomes really student centered. Okay. Okay, sir. So I know I understand we are transitioning. We are in the traditional mode. Now we are imagining something like, okay, this is how the next method is going to be and we are transitioning. So this is some of the methods which we can adapt. Even after the session is over, if any of you have any doubts at any stage, please feel free to reach out to me so on curriculum design or any other aspect. We can discuss it and take you through that. Okay. Uh, any peer questions for Arun sir? Okay, it is not specifically for Dr. Arun, but I remember uh, you mentioning that uh, during uh, framing of our objectives, we have to do something called as triangulation. Can we just uh, recall what exactly is triangulation? Yes. So, this is a classical example. You want your students to learn hands on technique of digital impression making. Your teaching method should focus on how they'll get that skill. And, you know, more demos you give, it may not work, but more they work with the material, it works. So what prioritization are you going to give to the different method of teaching and learning? When they're making those trials, are you going to give them feedback? How will you fit it in? Okay. So you have an objective that you want them to learn digital impression making. And two, your teaching method aligns with it. Three, your formative assessment may you are giving them feedback. So this is triangulation. We also call it as constructive alignment. But if I have impression making as my objective and I'm giving the essay question as how do you make a digital impression, they are not aligned. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Ma'am, uh, my query is, we have tried when, while we are making the presentation, we just try to understand the concepts that you told us and also the articles which we went through. Ma'am, uh, we have not seen, like, we are presenting our own or we are seeing uh, Meenakshi's presentation or uh, Padiasa's presentation. Ma'am, our vision is uh, not clear on how a curriculum is being presented or made by someone that we have seen it, ma'am. We have never seen, we have seen it in the textbook, the content. Yeah. So if we see those steps which is being made in in, in that format. So it, for us, it will be easy to understand and fabricate. I am I'm working on designing a self-directed learning module. Okay. okay. And uh, it's in the process because I'm uh, currently in the review of literature stage. So when is your course ending? July August. <laughs> July August. No, sir, October. October. No, sir, October. <laughs> Okay, uh, my, my, my module should be ready uh, um, probably by uh, May or June. I will definitely share it with you all. Any, 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 uh, any crisp uh, presentation which you have, which has been formulated in this format? Yes, ma'am. Any examples? Examples, yes, ma'am. Yes, sure. Ma sure, I'll look into it. I can see what I can share it with you. Okay. I, I can, I'll see if my MHP document also has these headings specifically because it may or may not match all the checklists, right? Because I made those checklists to suit your needs. 
but I'll look into the document and I'll definitely share it with you. Okay. Okay. Who wants to go next? Ma'am, let me try. <laughs> okay. All the best. Okay. Thank you. No, is it full screen, ma'am? No. I did the same thing, whatever you want to. See, please come down. Madam, volume ke paas ek icon hai, wo use kar lije, madam. Ye wo sab kiya hai. Haan, wo kiya to hai, kiyo nahi ho raha hai, samaj nahi aara hai. Oh, nahi, ma'am, next time, yes. Click on that, yes. Hua bhi? Nahi. Ma'am, you will see first. Oh God! वही तो किया जो आपने भेजा था मुझे ऊपर भी क्लिक किया नहीं हो रहा है सेम सेम क्लिक दैट मैन यू यू गेट दैट सेम थिंग क्लिक इट क्योंकि मैं स्क्रीन इसको कर रही हूँ ना मैं नहीं कर रहा हूँ मैम नेक्स्ट टू एनिमेशन जो स्लाइड शो दिस इस क्लिक ऑन टॉप टॉप आई एम डूइंग दैट बट फाइट इस नॉट कमिंग आई डोंट नो मैडम आपके लैपटॉप में हो रहा है मैडम आपको दिख रहा है मैडम फर्स्ट आपको मेरे को तो दिख रहा है मेरे को दिख रहा है फुल स्क्रीन दिख रहा है मैडम अच्छा अच्छा मैंने अच्छा मैंने ग्रुप में शेयर किया है तो उसको कोई कर सकता है क्या मैं वहीं से बोल दूं गिव मी 2 मिनट्स आई विल पुट इट हां या डॉक्टर अरुण कैन यू प्लीज पुट इट फॉर मी मैंने ग्रुप में सेंड किया है उसको ना Ma'am, can you see now? Hmm, I can see, but you have to click the slides for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, ma'am. You start. I'll, I'll keep going. Okay, thank you so much. So my topic is digital dentistry for BDS students and interns. Uh, the next slide. The rational. Ah, uh, yeah. Then what is the need for this module or the curriculum? This this module is designed to enhance the learning experiences of the BDS students because digital tools such as the virtual reality, 3D models, or multimedia presentation can aid in the better understanding of the complex dental concepts. Mirana, please summarize. Don't read from the slides. Yeah, yeah, ma'am. Ma'am, actually, uh, Dr. Arun has taken only one aspect, but here I have uh, focused on the whole digital aspect of the thing. Because digital dentistry, uh, what we are learning is we are learning uh, outside the course. Like we are attending the conferences and we are learning from there. There is no uh, uh, no such curriculum designed for the BDS students to learn in a capsule and capsule format, because this is the upcoming branch. They should be aware of it. So my uh, aim is to uh, make them aware about this thing, which is helpful in many aspects. Next slide, please. Dot. Uh, yeah. Then coming to the major major design decisions. Uh, I have prepared according to your checklist. The vision and mission are uh, the vision is to equip the BDS students with the comprehensive knowledge and the practical skill in the digital dentistry, and the mission is to uh, provide the BDS students with a structured uh, format in this digital dentistry, and integrate uh, this digital dentistry into the normal curriculum of the BDS students. And if they will be learning it, then they, to, this will be a uh, lifelong learning process. They can learn further through the uh, CD program. next yeah the object of the module is to uh, let the bds student understand the different aspect of the digital technology and they can uh, integrate with their normal curriculum to gain in the uh, to improve their clinical efficiency okay 
and this may further enhance their diagnosis and treatment planning in the patient care. Next. The target audiences are the final year BDS and the intern student. Now, why I have taken the final year BDS students? Because if there will be, uh, if there will be uh, 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 theoretical aspect will be taught to them in the final year, then for the practical aspect, they can implement in the, in the uh, while they are in the intern phase, intensive phase. Next. Dr. Arun, next slide, please. Expected yeah. outcome. Yeah, expected outcome is uh, the BDS student will be able to understand the various aspects of the digital technology. They will have a proficiency in the digital workflow. Like uh, when they will be giving a command to the dental laboratory, they will be uh, they will be a, they have a thorough knowledge in this aspect. Then this will en enhance their clinical competency because this is the upcoming technology. Next slide, please. Again, I have made the ma'am same mistake. I have I thought that this is the spice model. That is my mistake. Uh, this will be a corn model, what I got to know from Dr. Arun. Then next slide, please. Okay. Regarding the instructional approach, uh, I'll be taking a student-centered approach and the problem-based approach. Student-centered means, uh, as it is a new upcoming branch, the students will be definitely interested in this thing, in these things. And regarding the various aspects of the digital dentistry, I'll be conducting a survey to know what, what is their particular interest. So I'll be integrating those things uh, in the curriculum. Now, once they are uh, um, once they are uh, acquainted with this uh, clinical exposure of this digital industry, what sort of problem they are facing, we can take the feedback from them and modify our curriculum design accordingly. Next slide, please. Okay. Instructional uh, medium will be a blended one. Um, uh, what I got uh, understood from it that uh, we can we have to teach them in a uh, uh, face to face uh, teaching or we can go for a zoom type of learning we can mix it and we can uh, also integrate the practical demonstration with that ma'am i am in a very novice state what i have understood i am telling you okay next slide please uh, yeah the curriculum management system and the team um, the curriculum uh, will be managed by the staff members of the department of the prosthodontics with my colleagues i'll be discussing them Okay, then I have thought that will be uh, based on uh, four modules. The first module will be theoretical instruction and demonstration and use of the digital tool while they are in the uh, final year. And in the internship, they will be doing the observation and assistant to the faculty, sorry, for the spelling mistake during the use of the digital tool. And in the fourth module, use of the digital tool uh, by the interns themselves under the guidance of the faculties but how far they have learned assessment system i'm sorry i have not mentioned them i got to know from dr minachi that i have to also mention them okay next slide please yeah the curriculum monitoring and the improvement system that also will be monitored by the staff members i have not uh, put it here how they will be assessed uh, i got to know it from ma'am right now just now i'll be uh, putting those things again next slide please Okay, lesson related design and decision. Next slide. Okay, intended learning outcomes. Uh, I'll be using them using the Bloom's taxonomy and the chat GPT. Ma'am, you told these points to Narendra sir, so I have simply put those points. I don't know how it is applied here. Okay, next. Okay. So, so ma'am, okay, you go ahead, then I'll talk about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be finishing in two minutes, ma'am. Learning and the teaching methods, uh, detailed, it will be done, detailed session wise. Next slide. Yeah, learner support will be the feedback system. Whatever they have learned, uh, like uh, theoretical uh, uh, aspect has been taught, uh, then we have to take a feedback that where they are, uh, where they are, there is a communication gap or where they are missing, where the difficulty they are facing, then accordingly it will be improved, uh, which will help them to learn. Then we have to also identify other learning procedure, like uh, apart from the blended teaching, what other method is suitable for them. They can also discuss among the peers circle and they can come back to the faculty always to get the help. Okay, next. Learners resources will be the handouts, uh, procedural videos and practical demonstration. Like the procedural video, whatever digital technology uh, is available uh, through their uh, commercial videos are available, we can show it to them, official videos. And, and the faculty themselves can do the practical demonstration. Next. Learning environment will be in the... Uh, digital uh, in the lab itself or it can be clinical based next 
it will be a four module uh, of four day each now i and uh, now i am coming to know that four module is okay four day each it, i have to improve the number of days because for the final year uh, and the interns i have to improve the number of the days next slide please yeah next next Huh. The assessment system, uh, I have kept it as formative assessment because I find that uh, with formative assessment, the uh, students or the interns have every scope to improve their uh, improve their training, uh, improvement in the training period because this is a continuous process. So rather than as, uh, summative assessment, I have gone for the formative assessment. Thank you. Okay. So peer questions from Mirna ma'am. Ma'am, I have realized what mistakes I have made because two previous discussion. No? So you please kindly give the feedback. Yeah, ma'am, it's not mistakes. So we are all learning. So it's fine. Yeah, peer feedback. Madam, uh, how would you uh, ensure that uh, your students uh, achieve all the objectives of your program, which is uh, quite large in terms of uh, the content? Uh, you said yeah. that you want to integrate the whole digital dentistry. Yes, sir. I'll be conducting a survey because this is an upcoming uh, branch. We actually are attending the digital dentistry conferences. Hmm? There is no particular curriculum for the BDS students. So some at some point we have to integrate the digital dentistry in the curriculum. So I'll be taking a survey and uh, among the various aspects of the digital dentistry in which particular aspect the students are interested. Suppose there are five to six aspects, but like uh, VR is there, virtual reality is there, but they will not, all of them not will be able to implement them in the clinical field. But digital impression, they will be able to implement in the clinical field. So virtual reality aspect can be covered in the theoretical part. So they will have a bare minimum of idea. Uh, and later on, they can improve this thing by the continuous dental education program. Madam, do you so, have all the infrastructural requirements? No, 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 sir. That's why, sir, I told that in the theoretical aspect, we'll be covering all these things, like the virtual reality and all those things. Many of the students are not even acquainted with those things. So they will have a minimum idea. And among all these things, whatever the students are interested to learn clinically, because uh, digital uh, impression is a minimum thing. Digital uh, treatment planning, designing is the minimum thing. So whatever minimum thing they want to, uh, they are interested in, we can focus on those things. Okay. Any other question? Uh, we'll, I'll have just one minute of time left. Yes, yes. Okay. Now you all had a doubt on Bloom's taxon, or is it clear to you? Do you know how to design an objective using Bloom's taxonomy? Wonder Vision would help now. Okay. See, when we talk about designing objectives, at the end of this session, I want my learners to demonstrate a module design. Okay. At the end of this session, that is the four sessions, I want my learners to be able to demonstrate a module design. Now, when I set the objective as demonstrate a module design, my whole focus of training was how to get you to design one module. So we had initial sessions where we spoke about different models and then options was given to you as to how to go about designing. A checklist was shared. We went through Padiyasar's work as an example and discussed what means what like that right now finally you are in a position where you are demonstrating a module and you're all getting feedback okay if my objective was at the end of this session my learners should be able to list different curriculum design models then all i had to do was give you a ppt with the different design models Ask you to muck it up and vomit it back. Where does the learner learn more? In the demonstration aspect or in the listing aspect? Right. So, 
demonstration aspect. So when you are designing your learning objectives, always focus on higher order thinking skills, effective domain and performance domain. Now Bloom's taxonomy is mainly for a cognitive domain. Same way you have a domain for affective, you also have it for psychomotor. Where they have explained what does it mean, which word you should be using, etc. Et now, when we are designing or writing our learning objective, we tend to forget uh, a few parameters. For example, I need to have an active verb. An active verb like demonstrate. Then, what is it that should be done? That is the main crux of it. By when they should be able to deliver. Okay. So, all these parameters, you might find it difficult to write. That is when I said, try using chat GPT. Ask chat GPT to help you to write learning objectives of higher order thinking skills for a particular method. Like, let's say, uh, you give a prompt in chat GPT and ask it to write a learning objective for digital dentistry using Bloom's taxonomy higher order thinking skills. Effective domain higher order. Like that. That is all I said. Okay. I understand that chat GPT is also new and Bloom's taxonomy is also new. <laughs> you got confused with it. You can use chat GPT to make it right anything. And not just ChatGPT, you have Bing, you have Gemini, you have many other AI resources available. So, if you can, please explore ChatGPT, otherwise forget it, go back to your old method, take out the Bloom's taxonomy printout and use those verbs, active verbs and frame your objectives. Okay, that's the first point. Second point, uh, there was something on student learning. And I saw that whatever content was there in the checklist was just copy pasted. Right? So if you want clarity, please get back to me on that front. Okay. In interest of time, we have six more presenters. No, five more presenters. Let's get started with the next one. Who wants to go next? Nobody? Ma'am, I have made it uh, ready, but not like Meghna Madam and uh, all, Madam. I just, uh, whatever checklist, what you had given, Madam, mm. I have filled those criteria and I have a separate PPT for my topic, what I have closed for the course, Madam. Okay, let's see how you will present in five minutes. Mm, I'll just show you, Madam. Mm. I think it's haphazard. No, don't worry, sir. We are all learning together. So, uh, ma'am, someone is sharing. Let us share first, then I will share, ma'am. I think Shilpa, Shilpa is sharing. Shilpa, madam, is sharing. Yeah, ma'am. Let her complete, then I will do it, ma'am. Okay. Fine. Shilpa, madam, go ahead. Okay, you all can see the slide? Yes. Okay. So, the module is uh, developing an instructional module of a clinical residency program for dental graduates. So, this uh, basically a residency program uh, after the graduation, like uh, uh, those who do not want to proceed for the specialization, those who want to be a, as a just a general dentist and practice. So the rationale being the the population dentist who do not have the desire to specialize in a particular discipline but wish to continue to be a proficient general dentist. So the major design decision, well, the vision and mission is uh, based on the uh, this module is basically apply the scientific principle to learn and learning and oral healthcare, which uh, includes uh, using critical thinking, evidence, and outcome based and clinical based uh, decision making. So the objective of uh, this model is to provide a training in a multidisciplinary comprehensive oral health care for a BDS graduate to become a better general practitioner. 
so this uh, is going to manage the delivery of uh, oral health care by applying the concepts of the patients the practice management the quality of improvement that is responsive to the dynamic oral health care the target uh, audience will be the people who have completed the bds and those who want to uh, the specialist but uh, they are specialist in only one uh, department but they want to set up a clinic and uh, do all, all the other uh, uh departmental work but uh, not to call any other person so for them it is so the expected outcome will be uh, the residents will be expected to excel in diagnosis treatment planning and complete all the aspects in a comprehensive dental health care not to be in specific but in a comprehensive complex uh, treatment modality so the clinical uh, residency program this is basically a student uh, center and uh, it is a case based learning integrated uh, teaching and elective method so this uh, curriculum organization is a completely a uh, modular uh, uh, type model organ uh, which organizes the curriculum into self uh, contained modules which covering the specific uh, topics or the skills so the module can be uh, taught independently which can be flexible and combined uh, or rearranged uh, meet the learners and the need for the interest the focus is on discrete learning outcomes within the each module now moving on to the uh, instructional approach which is basically a case based learning so the, the strategy uh, for engaging the students over a complex scenario which allows the application of a theoretical concepts to bridge the gap between the theory and practical and encourage the active learning and it also encourages the students to think and make a decision uh, and it also provides opportunity to develop the key skills such as a communication a group working or a case discussion so and it also increases students to engage the peer motivation so instructional mod, uh, medium will be face to face or a directly uh, uh, the treatment uh, everything will be under the uh, supervise supervision so it is a direct uh, medium will be the face to face so the learning occurs uh, synchronously in a real time so they can uh, teachers and the leaders they will have the class or the guiding the students through the lessons the teacher and the students engage the in personal communication on a daily basis so the curriculum management system uh, <clears throat> this uh, work directly with the uh, interdisciplinary healthcare team which is under the supervision of the team of a specialist which provides a direct patient oral healthcare and related clinical service uh, the monitoring and improvement system uh, evaluation is uh, based on the kirk patrick model uh, which involves a four level of assessment uh, uh, where the reaction learning behavior learning behavior and the results so we using this model which can create actionable measurements which can plan and clearly define the goals and measurements and results uh, which are notably impact so the intended learning outcome uh, of this module includes the residents will be successfully treat the uh, variety of range of patients with the complex interdisciplinary multidisciplinary care needs which includes the restorative endodontic removable processes or fixed or any oral surgery and periodontics the residents will successfully treat the patients medically complex and special need the residents will uh, critically evaluate the dental and medical literature which applies evidence based uh, care in clinical activities the residents also will uh, demonstrate the highest standard of professional ethical and cultural humanity competence in clinical activities next moving on to the uh, what are the lessons related to the decision making the lesson uh, learning and teaching method which involves uh, uh, basically a modular type which in, uh, based on the uh, specifically the specialized instructor so will uh, moderate the entire uh, module which includes the a uh, multidisciplinary approach with um, where endodontists surgeons and prosthesis and perio in uh, the team of member will involve the learning supporters so uh, basically the students uh, uh, this learning supporters i did not understand clearly ma'am so i have just uh, gone through a little bit which provides a consistent one on one small group intervention so this is uh, something like a learning uh support us now ne next moving on to the learning resource is basically uh, direct uh, we can go for the digital learning resource which includes the videos or audios or texts uh, uh, based on the uh, uh, whatever the uh, type of cases they will be assigned to do then learning environment now uh, in a classroom it will be conducted in a classrooms and which includes a physical psychological and emotional environment the schedule of uh, this uh, program is uh, 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 extends from 6 months to 1 year 
uh, where the module is uh, in um, two sessions. So module one where simple cases will be allotted and in module two comprehensive or complex cases will be allotted. And then clinical residency program, there will be a team of members which involves, uh, these are the list of the uh, uh, treatment which they will be given in the module, including the emergency dental treatment, the periodontal treatment, the everything. Then next to the student learning approach, which is a progressively more self-directed and they can directly uh, approach to the uh, 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 supervisors and get the information directly. The assessment is uh, basically on the formative one or directly uh, the assessment is directly done by the uh, the supervisor who is going to assess each uh, individual uh, resident. So this is. Okay, in interest of time, shall I go ahead? Yes. How is your program different from that of a postgraduate program? Uh, Ma'am, in this uh, you know, post graduation, uh, we basically teach everything about all the treatment modalities. But in this uh, modality, we do not go dig into the entire why this treatment is applicable. Yes, the given uh, treatment, we will be able to explain it, but uh, not everything will be included okay. in this mo module. Okay. So it's it's a wonderful program. Wherein it's more like a finishing course where you're finishing program, yes, ma'am. You're training a student who has completed internship to be a practitioner, a general practitioner. Practitioner. Yes, ma'am. Let's let's go to your vision and objectives slide. Okay, so when I look at your vision mission, it speaks about applying scientific principles to learning and oral health care. It's a very generic statement. Okay. You need to have a vision statement with which which you should say that yours is a graduate finishing program. Isn't it? Right. That is what is the goal of your whole module. You want yes. to have you want to bridge the gap uh, between interns who are not capable of practicing on their own to become general practitioners. So that right. is a of your program. Okay. Mm. So the rest of it, it is a very generic statement. It can apply to any program. I cut and paste it in any other module also, this will be applicable. Right. So what exactly yeah. is the value of it? Go to the objectives. Objective slide. Again, this one also. It provides training in multidisciplinary, this thing. It's fine. Okay. But your objectives of the module should very specifically say by the end of the training of this module, this the participant will be proficient or will be capable or will be competent in treating what kind of cases. Okay. They working in a multidisciplinary approach is okay. Okay. So you are saying uh, practice management and improvement and dynamic and all. That's all very generic. So vision, mission, there is a distinction. So you will have to rework on that. Please go to the classroom management system. So your slide on classroom management system says the faculty will monitor. Classroom management system 
in addition what else can happen now look you are taking in all clinical practitioners or you are taking out fresh graduates so do you want them to be learning this whole thing in a lecture session your classroom environment also says that you are going to be having it in a uh, clinical uh, in a lecture mode no ma'am it is uh, purely a uh, clinical based ma'am yeah but your classroom environment doesn't oh. say that yes ma'am yeah so there is a yes. mismatch yes ma'am your idea is wonderful so but it is not completely clear in your mind also yes, i yes ma'am uh, it would be uh, specifically i have not mentioned i have to go in the so you can talk specific things ma'am pg program a ug program and a customized training module yes okay so once you have the clear idea like for example you sit with five practitioners who are just general dentists or fresh graduates ask them what is it that they would like to learn yes to be confident enough to uh, present yes ma'am then they're going to give you some ideas so you will have a much more streamlined version okay ma'am and this is a wonderful concept and if you can yes, actually develop it further you can even look at publishing it yes ma'am okay yes ma'am thank you shilpa thank you ma'am next person madam just one question uh, when she is uh, planned such a, a good program uh, does it trigger a need to be looked at uh, in terms of like is it a certificate course or a fellowship or something like that yes sir yes sir it's all up to her and her university or institution to take a call on that in fact many private practitioners are offering such modules now no yeah yes ma'am maybe a value added course ma'am a value added course at an institution would help her this can be ma'am a comprehensive clinical course for the general practitioner yeah see uh, dci says that the institutions cannot offer some particular courses but all yeah. other practitioner is providing these kind of courses there mm -hmm. is no validity by dci there is no monitoring by dci so i'm not talking of the regulatory components here right but these are all aspects you need to write to the dci and the ndc and get it done yes ma'am okay thank you thank you, you ma'am yeah thank you to go next uh, uh ma'am sadar sir left i will present my topic okay uh shilpa can you please stop sharing Ma'am, it's visible. Yes. Uh, Ma'am, my topic is effectiveness of early clinical exposure in learning prosthodontic skill among BDS first year student. So my background was there introducing to clinical environment early so that a student, according to their individual yes. intellect, time sir, and please. space. Rohit sir, please don't yes, read. Yes, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. So, ma'am, actually, what I am planning to do it. Okay, if I'll introduce a little early clinical exposure in the BDS first year, so that it will be easy for the student when they are entering in the clinic, they can do it patient work nicely. So there is evidence showing that early clinical exposure may more education and learning towards the real contest of practice. So need for the my module is in the for generation dental student have spent more clinical years in the classroom and laboratory. So here I'm trying to introduce this uh, preclinical exposure in the BDS first year students so that uh, the foundation year of dental student have made them thorough in the biomedical sciences, but have hardly provided them with any clinical experience. So advantage of my module is it will facilitate the student transition to clinical phase and it will help them develop professional identity 
and it will motivate a student and they will be aware of application of basic sciences and it will boost their confidence. So aim of my study to test the effectiveness of early clinical exposure module in preclinical prosthodontics and the performance of first year dental student. Uh, objective of my study is to compare the knowledge and skill of student trained using conventional didactic lecture with those trained with a combination of didactic lecture and early clinical exposure module. Sir, here I'm going to assess. I'll, I'll yes, just explain here. The goal of this presentation is not to test your effectiveness. I'm not looking at a research thing. I just want to know how you're designing your module. So if you can show us how you have designed your early clinical exposure module, that will be great. Okay. So here, uh, my methodology is that to present a study will be conducted among BDS first year student. So my target audience will be BDS first year, first year student. No, no, there... no, no, no. Do you have the vision, mission? Do you have the learning objectives in place? Oh, till now, ma'am, I did not add it. I will add that today. I yeah, that saw is what... that. Uh, no, that is what we are presenting. Yes, right? Yeah, I'm not looking at a research project. I'm not at all looking at an educational research project. I'm interested in your module, how you are developed, what uh, model you have applied, how you have followed the checklist, what are the doubts you have. That is what we are looking at. Okay, ma'am. Okay. So, do you have anything? So, in next normal. No, 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 ma'am. Yeah. Do you have any questions for us? Where you want clarity? Uh, no, ma'am. Uh, today I saw that Minakshi ma'am's and Arun's are project. So I will design one more. Then in coming classes, I'll present that. Okay, sir. Fine. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Who wants to go next? I'll do them. Yeah. <laughs> Are you able to see my slide? Yes. Um, whatever checklist you have given, I've tried to elaborate on that. Uh, this is only an idea. Um, while uh, going through the checklist, I also had a lot of um, problems in uh, getting the right words. As you said, it should be in a higher order thinking. All those things are not there, but I've tried to uh, do something. Uh, my title is Clinical and Laboratory Demonstration of Cars Partial Danger um, framework, framework Fabrication for Final Year uh, BDS Students. Um, why I got this idea is that when I uh, ask final years for their... Uh, normally, this RPD is only uh, done as a theoretical uh, thing. They are not uh, given any demonstrations or it's only what whatever practical knowledge or understanding is through textbooks only. Uh, practically, only MDS students are doing, BDS students are not doing that. So what happens is that when they come for exams and when we ask them, they are a little bit uh, somewhere I feel that their understanding is lacking. So that is how I uh, felt this could be a, a small, um, my idea is to demonstrate the clinical as well as take them to the laboratory so that they will understand the um, how the laboratory steps are happening and then so that they will have an understanding. It's not that they have to demonstrate something, but from the theoretical point, they have to slightly move ahead as a BDS student, not as a PG student. So that is my idea. Uh, so coming to the rationale, final students are taught about CPD designing only theoretically. They lack the practical knowledge. A single case demonstration, which includes the clinical with complete laboratory, helps the students to understand better. And based on this, they could perform better in exams. Exams. That is my only idea. Uh, major design decisions, visions to improve the understanding of CPD um, fabrication for the, in the final year BDS students. Uh, the mission, how do we do it? This can be achieved by the clinical and laboratory demonstration of a patient guide, patient case by a trained prosthodontist or a trained teacher. 
objective of the module at the end of the training period, the students get practical exposure to the clinical as well as laboratory steps in the CPD designing and fabrication. My target audience is EDS final year students. Expected outcome and competency students are able to understand the clinical and laboratory work and able to relate better and be perform better in exams. Major design decisions. Um, I have taken the student centered, problem based, integrated, and systematic approach. Um, curriculum organization is through module, single module having two sessions. One session having um, making the uh, students see the clinical procedure, and sessions two taking them to the laboratory and maybe we may have to bring them back to the clinical again uh, certain things um, again the um, after some procedure again it has to go to the laboratory so it could be um, sometimes clinical sometimes laboratory madam i'm not completely aware about the steps how it can be conducted um, it is a problem based training instructional approach problem based learning and didactic instructional medium is face to face um after um seeing all the presentation it could be a blunted also because students can get the information through online also so it could be a blended uh, teaching methodology too major design is curriculum management system is by faculty students and dental laboratory technician because we are involving the dental laboratory here monitoring and improving uh, improvement system is by faculty student and based on the feedback. Internal learning outcomes, better appreciation of clinical and laboratory steps, and they are able to perform better in uh, their exams. Uh, learning and teaching method, um, we have adopted the demonstration technique here. Learner support is basically from teachers, also uh, online uh, can be, they, have take, they can take. Learning resources are textbooks, articles, online resources. Learning environment, classroom learning, clinics and dental labs. Schedule is for one week, starting from the case and the laboratory. Um, they may require some time to complete the laboratory steps. So within a week, we can complete this. Um, student learning approach is supported by information technology resources. The assessment system is submitting, is what I thought. Thank you. Peer feedback. Yes, ma'am. We can go for peer feedback. We have some time. I think you're the last presenter. Do we have one more person presenting? No, no. Yeah. So, yes, sir. So we do have time for uh, giving good feedback to Sandhya. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. So peer feedback. Ma'am, uh, will it include uh, just a demonstration or even the student has to do the casting procedure? Ma'am, that part is basically, um, it's, it is coming as a part of an MDS curriculum. No? So I yes, am not going into that. I just want to improve their understanding to little higher. Okay. It is not, they don't have to do the procedure. They have to see it completely. What now the students, what they do is it is only theory. They just see some textbooks or whatever notes we are uh, giving. They are trying to learn. They are not seeing a case. They don't know what is guiding the in preparation, how it is done. So one complete, only one single case to be demonstrated. Okay. Um, so this is within your regular teaching uh, schedule? Yes, sir. And then I just have one thing in a lesson related design decisions, better appreciation of clinical and laboratory steps. How are you going to assess that? Could you ask better me again? I didn't hear it properly. 
better appreciation of clinical and laboratory steps. How is that being assessed? Appreciation, um, it may be by survey I can ask or even as a questionnaire, questions I can ask them, are they able to answer better or I, I don't know, maybe these two ways. Minashi, what's your idea? How can she assess? Ma'am, probably they can take a case and uh, maybe they can design a car CPD and then uh, maybe we can uh, um, identify the flaws related to the CPD design. As uh, uh, Ma'am, I have. It is, it is, yeah, she, but let's wait and uh, let me complete. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yes, I think she, uh, she also did mention that it was more for India's uh, curriculum where we actually try, try them to design and then we give them inputs. So maybe that could be one of the ways, but then how are we actually going to assess this one question, which I am not able to relate here. Better appreciation of clinical and laboratory steps. I can ask them, as you suggested, um, I can ask them to design uh, the clinical situation and ask them to design, but that we are already doing with second years. Second year is also classroom situation we gave and asked the components and asked them to design. So that has already been done. They are already, uh, we have, but that is, they are not seeing it clinically. Um, Ma'am, any inputs from your end? Uh, I'll wait. I'll hold on to all Ma'am. <laughs> so, Ma'am, anyhow, uh... Anyway, the PG students, they will be doing a preclinical work as a casting, yes, no, ma'am? Yes, yes. Right. Yes. So they can have a direct uh, contact with the PG students and uh, yes. they will know better peer feedback. rather than peer feedback. Yes, ma'am. But it will not be peer feedback, no? For the students, it will be uh, their PGs, no? PG students. So yes, peer means they have to be students only, no? Students only. Any other questions? Okay. So, uh, don't have any grand vision. Ma'am, it will be like an early laboratory exposure. Correct, correct. <laughs> because this is part of the uh, annual curriculum. Yes, you, sir. You are, you are going one step ahead and uh, taking some extra effort to implement the existing curriculum. Yes. Last partial denture is already there in the previous syllabus. Only yes. thing is you are trying to make it more meaningful to them by adding a demonstration yes. and uh, uh, clinical and practical uh, laboratory both. But you are not uh, adding any evaluation or any uh, higher order skills like um, uh, Mr. Madam said here. You should always, we should always uh, uh, have that in our mind when we decide our objectives. Yes, sir. So this How is one of the course. Um, How long is the course? It is just one week you mentioned. Um, why one done? week? Why? Because one week? Why? Why? Because um, one case will be there, and I have to finish one clinical one patient is coming. That case, I'll have to finish in a week's time. So that much only time I can give it to the students also. So it is during the students' postings you will do this. Or clinical posting you can take that. Yes, that can be done. Here. Yes, but if it is during the clinical postings, multiple times I will have to repeat. Yeah. You have to have so many patients. Yes. So maybe only for that batch, only for one week, I will be doing. So if it is, if one group of students are coming, say for final years, five students are coming, I'll have, if they are there, if I have to demonstrate during their clinical posting time, one batch I'll have to do. Then the next batch comes again, I'll have to do. 
So I am not thinking that way for one particular batch, one time. Madam, you could uh, video record one good case, each step, and then just uh, play it for each batch. That will be easier for you. You could video record a good case, both clinical and practical, and then that would Sir, be but, uh, uh, how? available to the students on demand. You know, they can access it anytime. That will be more effective. Sir, but That's how it I is think. different from the already available uh, material on the net? They can Google it and videos and everything will be available as well. No, because here also, madam is only doing a demonstration. So, doing a whether it is a live demonstration or a recorded demonstration, I think uh, doesn't make a difference to the students. Only thing so, is, you can uh, play the video can, and have a discussion with them. So, they can go up to the wax or uh, wax pattern stage. Hmm. At least they will have the, the students are not doing it learning. themselves. Since students are not doing it themselves, so then if it is only a demonstration, then a video demonstration can be played. And uh, then you can just, uh, discuss the each and every step. That will save you a lot of energy. During the, yes, sir. During theory class, we can just play the video. That yeah, because she, she wants to do it for the whole be. batch. Since okay. you are doing it for the whole batch, you will not be able to. Each student will not be able to see the mouth preparation when you are doing it in the mouth. Each student will not be able to see that. Yes. So better would be. That is my opinion. Because your objective is a very, uh, you know, just that you want to just take them a little higher than what is, uh, what they are at, at present. So that doesn't need so much of effort. That is what I feel. Yes. Yeah. So what Sandhya has designed is one tiny, tiny component. What Shilpa has designed is one huge component. Huge. Isn't it? So we have two extremes here today. And in both the things, you understand what are the complexities which come up when you want to design a module. When it's too huge, the amount of vision you need to have, the amount of specifics you need to detail, it becomes pretty complicated. And that means that you need to put a lot more groundwork to understand and develop. When it becomes too tiny, it becomes difficult to justify what is the need for it. So you have such a tiny one, then logistical questions start up. How will you give a demonstration to every batch? Are you wasting resources? Is it actually to be called even a module? Or can we just call this experiential learning? Mm -hmm. If I were to call it as experiential learning, should I call a demonstration or a video as experiential learning? Or if a student does it by himself or herself, is it experiential learning? If an MDS student is already doing it, why or how should a BDS student get involved? So it raises so many questions, right? The challenge is also with the objective. So you, one of your objective was the student should be able to better appreciate clinical and laboratory procedures. So that brought Meenakshi's question. How will you assess better appreciation? So, you know, we are going around in circles, the same thing again and again and again. So that's why you need to go back to the drawing board. Identify what is a proper need. So if your need here is that students do not understand uh, fabrication of a cast partial denture properly. They are failing in their exam for those particular questions or they are not able to perform optimally. If this is your need, then what is the solution? Solution could be that the theory classes are replaced by video demonstrations. The theory classes will involve visits to the laboratory. The theory classes will involve feedback from PG students in terms of what is it that they are understanding, they are learning. So you had another question. So how can PG students give feedback? So there is a concept called as near peer teaching. Near peer teaching. Okay. 
So wherein a student, if it's a third year student, he can be given feedback by a final year student or by an intern. They are near peers. Mm. Okay, so maybe you can consider that. So a lot of those kind of things come up. So I would suggest that you change your topic, pick up a proper gap in the curriculum which you want to address and design a module properly. That's going to give you an identification as I mean process as to how you can go about this thing. So you said you want to make this integrated. Doesn't it make sense uh, that every uh, theoretical topic you are teaching a student which has practical implications should actually be demonstrated practically? So how can I, uh, like for example, if I talk to the student about a mandibular fracture fixation uh, only in a theory way, like that is how we have been taught most of us, uh, do we even remember it? I would want to see a video. I would want to see a patient. I might be get invited to an OT where they're fixing the mandible. That's going to augment my learning process. But that does not mean that it is a separate module. Okay. Is that aspect clear? Yes. If you were to have a separate module altogether for training the student, let's say on the materials which are used in cast partial dentures, how to process those materials? What is the role played by the clinical specialist and the laboratory technician? And once they become practitioners, what is the instruction they need to give to the laboratory technician? Or if you were to also include the impression making procedures, the errors which can happen, how to avoid those errors, you know the whole spectrum of it, then it would become a proper module which might be beyond what is currently recommended in their syllabus. But just having one demonstration, that to only one demonstration, and students are not allowed to touch it or experience it or get, get any feedback or any process, does not make it into a module. module. But it can be an experiential learning methodology. I hope that aspect is clear to all of you. The second thing was you, you also mentioned that it is, uh, you are going to have what? Uh, PBL, CBL, TBL, everything in this. How? No. Problem-based learning and didactic. How? All you're doing is giving them a demonstration. How is this problem-based learning? They are exposed to how to design the CPD, no man. That is practical way of learning. How is that a problem-based learning? This learning would be probably wherein you give them cast partial dentures with errors. Ask them to identify what the errors are. And design methodologies in which those errors can be prevented, resolved or whatever. That would make it problem-based learning. Are you looking at anything like that? No. Huh. So if you say problem-based learning, it should be what we call as contextual. Andre, Ali, you should be able to apply it. No. Okay. And the student should be able to develop their own understanding of the problem. For example, the problem-based learning aspect I have given you all is to design one module using those principles. Now, as you design the module, you are all developing your own understanding. So, you are constructing your learning. And it is contextual. You are all required to probably design modules in your setup. Maybe you will have to come up with elective courses, this thing, that thing. That is why you have joined this program also. So there is an applicability involved. So that is how this PBL session, what we are doing is contextual. So you are able to construct your understanding and you also have a contextual application. Okay. 
and there is a real problem to solve. Let's say that I give you a scenario and say, look, for this particular thing, design a module. Then all of all 10 of you would have designed the same module. But each one of you would have had a unique approach to it. You will design your learning objectives differently, assessment strategy differently. So that can also happen, right? So when you're going to have such a thing, please call it a problem-based learning. Do not use the term PBL, CBL, TBL just because they're fancy terms. Do understand where it should be used, how it should be used. Okay. Uh, objectives should always be specific. You cannot use the term better appreciate. Yes. Yeah. Then there was something on the student learning approach. Okay. Uh, that's it. Yeah, that's all I had as a feedback. Most of your peers only asked you those questions, right? Okay. So we have another four minutes. If anyone has any question for me, I'd be happy to answer. Ma'am, all through our presentations, we have presented our ideas rather than the curriculum design. So yes. Our ideas only. And we try to incorporate all the lectures that we heard and all that uh, uh, checklist that you shared with us. So we have explained the checklist rather than we have given you submit you uh, curriculum. Like, like if I want to uh, develop a curriculum, it is just our understanding about our all the lecture points and the uh, checklist. Ma'am, yes. I just got to share an article in the group. So yes. this is basically on on a, a remote learning or a virtual learning platform. So a curriculum planning can be done. Where a current model will be discussed in that. So uh, we got a framework for us to follow and to incorporate all your checklists in uh, making our future uh, plans. See, there is no hard and fast rule which says that you have to do this way only. Okay. Right. So these are all just examples. So you have to think whether this will suit your context or not. Whether this is appropriate for you or not. So this curriculum, even if we uh, use our concept, will the universities or the uh, the councils, will they accept our way of thinking, ma'am? Or it is, there is a standard way of thinking wherein this way is the one which will be accepted by the universities or the councils? Right now, neither the universities nor the councils do know how to go about this process. Simply because dental faculty in India have not been trained in educational methodology at all. So if we have like, uh, I'm giving you enough number, maybe about 5,000 dental teachers, maybe about uh, 200 are trained. That also is a high number. 200 being trained is also a high number. Very, very, very few dentists are there Dental teachers are there who are systematically trained in educational methodology. So you'll have to look at those dentists who have an MHP degree or a PhD in medical education because they're particularly specialized in that field, right? So if you go with that hierarchical thing, so your uh, council or something might just come up with a terminology and say design like this, but that is not how it is to be done at all. As an, just... as an educational researcher, when I have to look at it, there are multiple ways in which we can approach the problem. So the individual teacher should have that liberty, but that basic training should be there. Now, when I designed this uh, module for four sessions with you all, my whole and sole thing was, when I say curriculum, people should not confuse that with syllabus. Now we are all clear. Curriculum syllabus are not the same. When I say curriculum, you should always think of vision, mission, objective and the learning processes, assessment strategies, a management system, feedback, monitoring, evaluation. All of you are on the same page with that. Right. This is all that my goal was. I just wanted to sensitize you to that these things are there. One of my higher order thinking goal was that you should be able to design a module. So, which most of you have done it to, I would say, a level of five or six, depending on how much you could read, think, participate actively and all that. So, I can see that there are some who have adopted it almost 70-80%, some who are stuck in 10 to 20%, so that the variation is there. 
But yes, sir, please go ahead. You wanted to say something. Uh, no, uh, going to Dr. Arun's uh, query, okay, where we can implement this. What I have experienced last uh, few years is uh, in the NAC, a lot of value added courses have been just included in the uh, paperwork saying that we are doing giving uh, offering these value added courses. But actually, we are not, uh, you know, uh, designing it in any uh, proper format. So I think to begin with, we can. Uh, Start designing at least one or two value added courses using these uh, principles, and I'm sure it will be a very effective way of uh, implementing it in our uh, universities. Absolutely, I agree with that. So, that is what actually prompted us to use curriculum design component in your uh, certificate program in the first place. So, when Suhasini Ma'am and all we were brainstorming, that was one of the reasons why this came out. Because that 16 hours is, uh, we just put some. Uh, uh, 10, 10, 15 points and say that this is our value. Yeah. Of course. yeah. Anything else? Ma'am, I would, I would ask something else. Yes, please. Ma'am, uh, I am doing a pro I am doing a project on assessment, uh, assessment method of this, uh, postgraduate students. So for that, uh, I have used the DOPS method and I have uh, in the WhatsApp group, ma'am, I have shared the modified DOPS form uh, that I, I am going to use in my project. So I need your feedback in that because... Please send it, to, me. Please send it to me over email, ma'am. I'll have a look at it. Ma'am, can you please uh, share your mail ID in the WhatsApp? Yeah, I'll, I'll message that. Okay, okay. That will be great help to me. Sure, sure. Do we have any other questions? I had a lovely time with you all. I mean, spread out for nearly two months, I think, right? Ma'am, actually, literally, we're scared today. <laughs> <laughs> what is going to be a verdict on our presentation? <laughs> okay, after the presentation, are you still scared or are you okay? No, I am fully relaxed now. <laughs> <laughs> No, see, it's, that's why I said it's all in the process of learning. We are all learning together. That's all. So you start a totally different aspect, no? Oh. Yes. Yeah. Out of the comfort zone. I had missed your last two classes, man. So I was just relating, and I just so I, I there was a bit lost. Probably I, mean, I shall improvise on that. Certainly, I'm sure. I'm sure you will. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, madam. Madam, I had to go in between because some guests have arrived. Okay. My presentation is there, madam. I'll get back to you personally then, madam. Sure, sir. Okay. Ma'am, do share your email ID. I'll, I'll... I'll send it on the WhatsApp group right away. Yes. Dr. Siddharth, everybody can share personally to madam. Everybody are presenting. It's your duty <laughs> to present here only. Madam, I was trying. We are to going to miss out madam. your thoughts, sir. Yes, new yes. ideas. Allah, this is another yeah. <laughs> It is a secret module. We will not be able to understand. <laughs> no, 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 madam. Next, next class, first I will present it once more, madam. I was presenting. Yes. Sripa so came in with an answer. I think this is permission. You all on this module. <laughs> on a lighter note, doctor, don't take it personally. Hey, no, nothing, nothing of that sort, madam. <laughs> if I presented, I will. Uh, no, I have some doubts on the evaluation part. Even I asked you if you remember long, long back. Sir, you can, that... you can share your slide. We can uh, spend another two to three minutes discussing it. Not an issue. And hey, we sir, can. Madam, give, me just, give me just five minutes. Madam. Just give me five minutes. I'll just say that. So, till he shares his slide, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer. I think I put everybody into trouble, ma'am. So sorry for this. <laughs> because I stay for eight, six more. <laughs> ma'am, uh, I have a question, ma'am. Yes, Chilpaji. Well, ma'am, uh, whatever the modules we design, uh, that is not being like validated by DCI, right? Still, we can apply for uh, validation from the DCI, like. 
No. DCA will not validate it. So we don't have to apply there. Why do you want uh, DCA to validate it for you in the first place? Like to be certified as this person has done the. Uh, Madam, you Madam, you should try to send it to the DCA committee as a consultant. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You can that validate should be your goal. That's what I said uh, with the permission of uh -huh. Madam. With us only, you can validate, or maybe some other person on this who can validate and give input, and then you can grade yes, validation more either, how much more validation is required in your module. Based on okay, that, okay. Think... since we are talking about validation, let me give you all one heads up. We come with a very uh, kind of mindset where we say that we have to prove or disprove something. Where we have to measure it, right? Yes, that thinking is called positive thinking. Where we have to measure, prove, disprove. But that's not how educational research works. Educational research just looks at what was the learning experience. What was the feedback received? Did it work in your context or not? That's it. So that is called a constructivist approach. I would request you all to move away from a positivist measure to more of a constructivist approach. See, all along we would have been trained in our research. You have to measure, you have to prove, disprove. So that is where Rohit Kumar's uh, a topic came also effectiveness of a particular module. Why should I know the effectiveness? What use is it of? But if I were to know what was the feedback received, how did he improvise? What did he do? What was his program evaluation? It is of value to me, right? So this is one way you can make your uh, work publishable. Also, look at constructivist. There is something called as research paradigms. You can look for it. Research paradigms. So look at the different approaches to research. You'll get the better idea on this. So will, that not become, will that not become a qualitative research then? Because if you are uh, it will. without quantifying, it will be qualitative only. Be qualitative. Constructive is the uh, approach is mainly qualitative. How will you prove the effectiveness of a particular module? Are you going to totally no. isolate a group of uh, students? Is it ethically correct? So there are so many question marks which will come when you adopt a positivist approach. So that, sir, are you sharing? Yeah, yeah, madam. I'm just trying to share. I don't know why it is revolving. Something is messy today with me. Okay. So, if you so ask a question, also we sir. can answer it without you having to share. Uh, like, madam. Uh, I'll just briefly go ahead with the checklist that you had sent, madam. Like I went ahead with the rationally, I included those all things. I had a doubt in the basic part is, madam, like uh, the curriculum monitoring and improvement system. Yes. My topic is, madam, like uh, I'm doing implementation of a preclinical module of oral implantology for final BDS students. It's restricted only to final BDS students. Okay. And uh, the outcome is a competence competency based outcome, madam. The curriculum organization is I have uh, structured it according to crunch model, madam. Okay. Uh, target audience is like uh, finally uh, undergraduate students, but when I come to the part where, madam, uh, like lesson related designing decisions, yes. where uh, the last part, the assessment system is like I, have, I am planning to follow Kirk and Patrick's model, madam. Like in Curse and Patterns model, we have label one, label two, label three, and label four. Mm -hmm. In label one, madam, there are, it is again subdivided into four categories like what is the program outcomes, what material you are using, and it is divided like the evaluation categories. Just, just, just hold on here. Just hold on here. When you talk of Kirk Patrick model, yeah, madam. It's a program evaluation model, it's not an assessment system. Okay, okay, madam. When you talk about assessment, you are assessing what the student has learned. Okay, okay, madam. Okay. 
your curriculum monitoring system can include a process evaluation model like Kirkpatrick Patrick model. Okay, madam. It can also talk about a CIPP model, a context input product process model. Okay. Like that, there are different models which are available. The logic model is there. Like that, you can look at it. Okay. But when you talk about student assessment, there are specific assessment strategies. You can have a look at Miller's pyramid for assessment strategies. Okay, madam. Madam, if, uh, if we are going ahead with the feedback based evaluation, suppose at the end of the module, madam, then what would be the appropriate uh, this thing to measure it, madam? You're taking students' feedback for what purpose? Um, whether this module helped them in which aspect? Exactly. So you're looking at two. You're looking at learning reaction, right? Yeah. Whether the learners learn properly or do they have any problem? How did yeah. they experience it? Second is yeah. the learning process, like how much did they learn? What did they learn? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So yeah, it is a metric model, no? Okay. 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 Madam, I'll just briefly tell you what what I'm trying to do. Others will get angry, madam. It's already late, madam. Like what I found in the uh, DCL curriculum is, uh, it's already there. Mm. The syllabus is already there, but it's not been into use. Mm. So what we did is comprehensively when uh, now measured of the college have a separate implant department. So what I thought is when there is a comprehensive implant department, we made a guideline like selecting slow learners and fast learners. Okay. So we chose only the fast learners for this module, madam. Okay. Let's say, madam, 10 students we have selected based on their attendance, based on their clinical quotas, whatever they have to do, CDs and all they have completed, then they can come to it. Then we went ahead with the syllabus, madam. It says that this much, this much particular part, let's say, like, madam, parts of implant or his Fine. own part. Now you are designing a model for advanced learners. Yeah, madam. Yeah, madam. Okay. Fine. Huh. What is your question? Uh, then first thing is after selecting the fast learners, madam, then what we did is because these topics are divided across all the four years. Mm. So, whether this, because we are including final and video students, we need to first evaluate how much amount of knowledge they have at this point of time. So, initially, initially after identifying those students, we did a questionnaire based pre evaluation test on the following topics. Okay. What has been covered till third year? Objective based questions we did. What is your specific question in this context? Like, madam, the questions are on based on the topics, whatever it is. No, no, I no, I no, give no. you the example. No, no. What is your specific question to me in this context? Like whether we can uh, like selection of the subjects can be done based yes. on this question, madam. Yes, up to you because you are the module designer. You will okay. decide what are your entry characteristics and exit characteristics. So you will decide what on what level you will certify that a student has completed a module or not. For example, okay. I think Meenakshi or somebody had a cutoff rate at saying that 75% this should be scored, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, right? Exactly. Her, exactly. her criteria for exit. Yeah, but, yeah, but. Like that you can have. It is up to you. As a teacher, you are you can definitely do that. Okay. But at all levels, you will have to justify. Okay. Okay, madam. Yeah. Okay. Fine, madam. I'll, I'll just refine the evaluation part label 3 and label 4. And okay. I'll get back to you. Sure, sure. You're always welcome. Okay. Hope you all enjoyed the learning as much as I did with you all. Thank yes, you. Ma Thank you for being so, here. Sorry, everyone. Sorry for being late and all. Uh, I am sorry. When I am not. When he meets, we'll get you additional sweets. But Siddharth, we want your presentation. Uh, <laughs> sir, next class, I, I'll update it and I'll do it, sir. The evaluation card, I'll update it. I'll we will wait it and I'll do it. Yes, yes, yes sir. Okay. Sir, anyone is coming to Delhi this March first week? Sir, you are coming? You are in Delhi, I guess. I'm in Delhi only. Because someone was asking that, uh, like, on systematic review and meta analysis, there's a course by UGC. Okay. So if anyone is willing to come, they can join. Can so you share the details of that on the group? Yeah. Yeah, sir. Yes, I'll share it. I'll share Thank it. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
uh, this time i'm writing my ninth standard exam in march so i'm very busy ma'am which exam madam pardon me madam ninth standard exam board exam okay okay kids kids okay. okay. ma'am skid <laughs> <laughs> any coming for chennai please pg convention no no okay 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 i'm coming yeah if you will excuse me i will leave my daughter is not thank yes ma'am thank you very much thank you thank you ma'am we had a great time thank you, thank you so much thank you thank you thank you ma'am thank you ma'am good night if anyone is coming do let, let me know in the group so we can read there okay need your presentation we on doctor we on doctor yeah <laughs> <laughs> sir we have not seen your face first of all we are ragging you to the core today <laughs> maybe the exactly. time when my video is on no one will ask when i am my laptop will be you are mr india in the group sir <laughs>